Have you ever seen the toenails of your grandfather and thought he might be a troll? Those yellow, misshapen, and brittle nails make small children cringe, and he has begun wearing socks with sandals. Known as onychomycosis, this unshapely blemish affects about 10% of the total population, 20% of people over 60, and 50% of people over 70. There can be several causes of your imperfect nails. The most common is a class of fungi known as dermatophytes. Certain types of yeasts and non-dermatophytic molds are also a frequent cause. Don't think your nails are the only part of your body that can be affected by dermatophytes. When infecting the skin, they cause ringworm or tinea. They can also take up residence in your hair follicles and cause what is known Known as tinea capitis. Dermatophytes and the disease processes they cause are quite unique in the world of living organisms and parasites. First, no living tissue is invaded by the fungi. Instead, they colonize the dead layers of tissues that have large amounts of a protein called keratin. Hair, skin, and nails all have large amounts of keratin within them. Secondly, even though no living tissue is invaded, they can still elicit an allergic and or inflammatory response. Thirdly, these types of fungi have evolved to the point that they are completely dependent on human or animal infection for the survival and propagation of their species. Our nails are primarily grown from what is called the matrix. The matrix consists of epithelial cells that grow and divide. These cells primarily contain keratin. Once they begin to reach the end of their respective life cycles, they go through a process called keratinization. When the cell dies, it loses its nucleus and other intracellular organelles. What is left over is hardened keratin. An enzyme known as transglutaminase begins to enclose the keratin in an insoluble mixture of different proteins and fats. The end result is the hard nails we use to pick noses and give back scratches. Keratin is the main food source for dermatophytes. Once the keratin-rich cells are infected by these fungi, they begin releasing sulfite. Studies have shown that growth and proliferation of dermatophytes is reliant on sulfite. Keratins have a sulfur-containing amino acid known as cysteine. Cysteine bonds are what stabilizes keratin and gives it a rigid structure. These fungi use cysteine to produce sulfite. Once the sulfite is produced, it clings to the cysteine bonds, and thus the process is repeated. The result is keratin that no longer has cysteine in it, and it becomes brittle, misshapen, and hideous. There are several things that can increase your risk of having your nails infected by these little demons of destruction. Diminished blood circulation, like in the case of periphery artery disease, slow-growing nails, injury to the nail or weakened immune systems, a family history of fungal infections, diabetes or AIDS, age and gender are also contributing factors. Men tend to be more susceptible than women. Environmental conditions like walking barefoot in damp public places, humid or moist work environments, and wearing socks and shoes that prevent ventilation can also increase your risk. In the end, if your nails begin to yellow and you find yourself buying socks that match your sandals, hopefully the knowledge half of people over 70 have the same problem will ease your mind. If it doesn't, then go to see your doctor and have your nails tested for the exact type of parasite invading them. Maybe you'll be able, once again, to have your feet rubbed by someone who doesn't vomit at the sight of them.